The Italian America Show is sponsored by Full Sponsorship, Cento Fine Foods, Trust Your Family with Our Family, The Bianchi Law Group, Dr. K, the Management Professor, the authors of the number one international best-selling cookbook, Don't Cut the Basil, Dr. Mark D'Annunzio, National Fourth Vice President, Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. The Grand Lodge of New York. The Grand Lodge of Ohio. The Grand Lodge of Virginia. The Grand Lodge of Maryland. The Grand Lodge of the Northwest, representing Oregon and Washington. Long Shot Productions, get back in the game. ACMT. Excellence in Aerospace Manufacturing. Purchase the new book, The Palm Beach PI, by Italian-American private investigator Frank Chiato. Available now where books are sold. Joining me here today is Mary Kovach from Cincinnati. We have Mark D'Annunzio from Florida and our esteemed guest of honor, comedian John D. Domenico, one of the best impersonators you will see out there today. John, thank you so much for joining us here today. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm so honored to be a guest on the show today. So I first learned about you through uh, Cameo. Oh. I had ordered a cameo from somebody that um, may or may not like Donald Trump, but you, of all the Trump impersonators, I'm like, yes, you were the most expensive, but because you were the best. So we hired you and you did an amazing Trump impression for somebody's birthday. And literally it was the best present I could have gotten this person, especially now dealing with the quarantine. So thank you so much. Um, oh, thank that you. Note, and it is a great yeah. gift because, you know, you don't have to pick it up. You don't have to drop it <laughs> off. It lasts forever. You can watch it over and over and over again. I'm plugging Cameo. So. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Cameo. Um, so I want to start off the interview by asking, I mean, you really nailed that Trump impression from the facial expressions to the tone in his voice to the inflections. And I've seen you do it now in researching you with a variety of other different personalities. How do you how do you match yourself to them? Um, well, a uh, couple of things. When I was a kid, I was a ham, and I loved doing voices. But I also had a speech impediment. So when I got into first grade and they tested me, I did have a speech impediment, and I had um, uh, I did eight years of speech therapy, which really gave me the mechanics of how to figure out how to do somebody's voice. And at the same time, I wanted to be an actor comedian. So for me, as I started, even, you know, very young, when I wanted to do a voice, I didn't feel it was just the voice. I had to like, when I did Groucho, I had to, you know, I had to have the Groucho, and I had to have the eyebrows and the mustache. And for me, it was always like the entire, to do the entire thing. And, you know, as I pursued acting and studied acting, a lot of it became about the physicality and the facial things and, um, and then the component of the voice. And for me, anytime I assume a character, and I'm assuming you saw Austin Powers and Dr. Evil and Dr. Phil and all these things, I want to do it 100%. I want to be like the extreme impersonator. I want to be the character you could watch in a movie for 90 minutes, not just in something for a sketch for, you know, two and a half minutes. My goal was to make it immersive. Uh, for whoever watches me. So that's been my choice all along to kind of go all the way with it. And uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing, depending on if you want to do a live show, because you can only get really one or two characters in. Uh, with Trump specifically, um, I practice every single day because his voice is so elusive and it's like sand, it kind of passes right through your hand. It's, it's, you have to really work on him. So John, I want to thank you again for joining us um, and congratulations on your recent engagement. Um, oh, I'd like you. to ask, uh, what is one of your favorite impressions to do and why? 
Um, I love doing Austin Powers because I've well, I have been doing him a long time. The response to him, it doesn't matter if I do it here in the U.S. or South America or I've done him in Italy. I've done him in um, uh, uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Everyone knows who this character is. And he's one of those characters that everyone loves to see because he's so happy to see you, baby. Yeah, you look groovy, <laughs> baby. And I just think that people really appreciate like the, the positive energy he emits and he's so much fun. And I think people really respond to that. I'm always amazed when I, I was doing an event, it was right around the third, the third movie came out. I was at Mammoth Racetrack in New Jersey because a buddy of mine used to be the uh, marketing manager and I'm Austin Powers and a five-year-old kid's like, he's like, he's like, you're Austin Powers. And then an 85 year old woman came over to me and goes, shag me, baby. <laughs> and I just thought like this character, everyone loves this character. He's like, he's one of those iconic characters. He's been around long enough now that 20 years from now, even though there won't be a film, people will know who Austin Powers is. Have you ever met someone while impersonating them? I haven't, no. <laughs> I, I did Donald Trump's 55th birthday as Austin Powers okay. before I was doing him. Uh, I really wanted to meet Mike Myers. The closest I got was his assistant. And that was, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed by his incredible talents. That's fantastic. Mark, do we have any questions? We do, uh, from Mike in Tampa wants to know, uh, what's your favorite Italian memory growing up? Um, my favorite Italian memory is my Aunt Rita, and uh, just so everyone knows, I'm, I grew up outside of Philadelphia in Ambler, which was a predominantly Italian town. Uh, uh, my Aunt Rita lived in the next row of row homes that I grew up, and she, every Sunday, did like the full Italian dinner it was it was incredible we would and it was a tiny house and i had two brother two biological brothers and my dad and we didn't always make the cut on the invites so when we got to go there it was a big deal it was it was a big deal and then uh christmas at, at christmas eve at her house uh was all everything and her making the pit cells and she would just like it was like a one woman was like a factory, like making all this <laughs> food. It was always amazed, and I loved my aunt Rita uh, a great deal. And it was um, she a lot of wonderful Italian memories. What is your favorite Italian dessert or dish? Well, you know, I I when I do corporate, a lot of my work is corporate. I'm also on the road performing. I judge all Italian restaurants not necessarily on their pasta, but on their tiramisu. <laughs> You know, because they're, they're, some have too much booze, some don't have enough, some just, and I always, I just love tiramisu. I love how it can be presented so many different ways in a glass, on a plate, with a little bit of cinnamon. There's, you know, it's, it's, I just, to me, that means a lot, you know. Yep. As a dessert connoisseur. We'll be right back after this break. What's the secret to my famous margarita pizza? Fresh basil fresh mozzarella, and cento. People ask my wife, what's the secret to your bolognese? A little of this, a pinch of that, and cento. Grandma passed on two family secrets. Saute, don't fry, and, and always cook with cento. <laughs> it's no secret that the best tasting dishes use cento. San Marzano tomatoes imported from Italy, with nothing added, just authentic flavor for authentic Italian cooking. Cento, trust your family with our family. The Sons of Italy Foundation and Hardcore Italians are partnering for a fundraiser. Hardcore Italians is donating $5 for every St. Joseph's Day t-shirt sold to SIF. Funds will be used for the St. Joseph's Day altar exhibit at the Sons of Italy Museum on Staten Island. For more details, scan the QR code on the bottom right. Can we put you on the spot and do sure. a couple... Yeah, just so everybody 
But well, it is I'll, do, I'll do Trump first because he's such a tremendous, trem the greatest president in the history of presidents other than the late, great Abe Lincoln, who, by the way, wasn't that great. He wasn't that great, Lisa, I have to tell you. What do you have to do with teeny weeny civil war? What do I get? What do I get? I get the Kung Flu from Wang Chung, China. <laughs> And we can do Dr. Phil. Hey, everybody, it's me, Dr. <laughs> Phil. What were you thinking? Hey, listen, it doesn't matter how flat you make a pancake. It's got two sides, okay? <laughs> and then Austin Powers again, baby, yeah. But if you know, if you do Austin Powers, you've got to do Dr. Evil, <laughs> right? You know, Scott, you're just not evil enough. You're quasi-evil. You're semi-evil. You're the Diet Coke of evil. Just one Kelly. Um, but, and this is one of my favorites, Peter Falk. I thought he was great. Folks, I hate to bother you. One more thing. Um, uh, is it okay if I leave my car out front? <laughs> Hysterical. The Trump yeah. gets me behind. Just the way you squint your eyes and you purse your lip, it's hysterical. And then yeah. you put the wig on, it's uncanny. The wig, the makeup, the little aging, a little, make it a little more ruddy. You know, exactly. He's such. He's got such an unusual way of speaking. He speeds up and he slows down. He gets high and he gets low. It's, it's a lot of work. That voice. Yeah. Well, what else are you working on besides the impressions? Um, I'm always writing. You know, if you've watched the viral videos, I write. I write those. Um, so I do a lot of writing. Um, every now and then, I'm lucky enough to get an acting role where I actually play myself. Um, I, I was on The Sopranos, but I played a Jewish character. I played Harry Reinstein because they said, you just don't look Italian enough. I'm thinking like, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, all right. But I got to be on the show and I got to meet uh, a lot of cast members. It was a really, it was an amazing day. Uh, but uh, a lot of my work uh, as a performer Live performing, which is the thing I love. I love getting in front of an audience. I love that instantaneous reaction, how you can kind of gauge your, um, gauge your present, gauge your performance uh, is obviously not happening because of uh, COVID-19, because of the pandemic. But usually I'm on the road anywhere from about 25 to 30 weeks a year doing national sales meetings for major corporations and ticketed shows and live performances in other parts of the country. But right now I'm concentrating on just, you know, as since we all live online, just putting out as much content as possible and feeding all of the different platforms and writing and kind of prepping for when this is going to be over. We'll be right back after this break. It's an immense honor to be here. I just think that this gala is such a great opportunity for kids all around the country. And this means so much to me on an even deeper level. You're helping a lot of young kids. Hoorah! Uh... Thank you for this Lifetime Achievement Award. I thank you very much, John. I'm very honored. May God bless you all. Thank you for thinking I'm worthy of this. We can sing in the glow of a song that I know of. Our love is in joy, peace of mind. What's the secret to my famous margarita pizza? Fresh basil, fresh mozzarella, and cento. People ask my wife, What's the secret to your bolognese? A little of this, a pinch of that, and cento. Grandma passed on two family secrets. Saute, don't fry, and, and always cook with cento. <laughs> it's no secret that the best tasting dishes use cento. San Marzano tomatoes imported from Italy, with nothing added, just authentic flavor for authentic Italian cooking. Cento, trust your family with our family. Chris Morganelli uh, asked, is it, is it, yeah, they're, they're all Italians listening to this. Is it hard to go back to your normal voice after an impersonation? 
Um, you know, it's funny. My voice was actually higher. And um, it, because I've done Trump so much in the last, since he announced, I was doing him before that, but my own family have noticed that A, I'm speaking more like him and my voice has dropped kind of an octave. It's gone down a, a, an octave because his voice is two octaves below my voice. So I always have to kind of suppress my normal speaking voice. So there's been a little bit of a, when you're doing somebody essentially every single day and you're putting the makeup and the wig on, you kind of start assuming some of their vocal and physical. I, I find myself doing this, doing the, even if oh, I was, I was doing an event before, you know, the pandemic started, I was Austin Powers. I mean, yeah, baby. And I put my thumb up. I go, uh Oh, I'm running the characters together. <laughs> I was wondering, have you ever thought about touring all of your characters? I have, and we've talked about a, a one-man show for a while. You know, I live in a town where I could prob probably do a one-man show, and we've been talking about it for quite a while. And my main thing with this is because I like to do, like I mentioned before, I really like to do full makeup. So we were trying to come up with a structure where I would probably come out as myself. We would go to a video of me in one full makeup character, come out of that, I could be in another full makeup character live and then go to another video. It's just trying to come up with a structure that'll work. But I would love, I would love to tour. And because of the, the Trump impersonation, um, I have people contacting me from all over the world. For some reason I have, I did six appearances on uh, this morning in London. So I got a very big following in in the uk i actually went over there to perform a couple of shows and it made me aware of the fact that i could probably do a run here uh so that's one of the things we're definitely looking at uh, to be able to yeah. produce a one-man show or a two-person show and do all of these different characters and the characters would somehow interact it's just you know uh, to be honest it always comes down to one thing money <laughs> So a producer has the money <laughs> to front the show. But I think writing it would be uh, actually easier than anything else. So before when I was having my technical difficulties, I was asking you about going viral. Howard yeah. Stern just mentioned you. You yeah. have been with Alec Baldwin. Yes. Uh, talk to me about getting that kind of notoriety among those peers. Well, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because... Um, during the run up to the election, when, when Trump announced, I was one of the few people doing Trump, especially in full makeup. There was, really wasn't anybody doing him on a regular basis. And I've been doing corporately. So when he announced, everybody came to me and I'm very grateful for that. So I ended up on Fox News, 50 appearances, Conan O'Brien, over 50 appearances, Chelsea Handler, uh, ended up on Planet America, Trump, all these shows. And in that period on the run up to the election, a little after, I did over 300 interviews. I was in the New York Times. I was in the Washington Post five times. All these things happened. But um, the funny thing is because I have a mask on because I'm someone else, it kind of, it's odd. It doesn't stick, if you know what I mean. Um, the viral thing is amazing, but because people can't see me, there's like this little bit of disconnect because if one, if I, as me, had done 300 interviews, you'd know exactly who I am. But because I did those interviews most of the time in character, especially if they were on TV and you know, news things, people don't necessarily know who I am. So the viral thing is great. It creates a lot of buzz, directs a lot of people back to me on, on YouTube and Instagram and all these amazing things. And then it just makes me want to work harder to kind of expand the audience and do more, do something else that's viral and kind of keep, keep that going. But it's not like people are going necessarily choose looking towards me as me they're looking to me as the trump guy it's it's a, a little bit of a disconnect yeah yeah but you know what your star is fast on the rise and people will know you as a household name as equal to your impersonation oh, thank you thank you i so much. certainly believe that well john this was so much fun i'm happy to meet the man behind the cameo so thank you that's Mary great Mark. if you brought that up yeah 
And if anyone but, oh, cameo, go to cameo, find me under my name, and I can do it for any character. Obviously, Trump's the most popular right now. Yes. No, of course. Um, and, and congratulations to all of your success. Mary, thank you, thank you so much for having my back as I deal with these technical difficulties. <laughs> but I think we got it straightened out. And Mark, thank you for being an amazing moderator. Thank you, Lisa Marie, for hosting. And again, thank you to John um, for coming on and sharing a little bit of your life with us and the background of all your success. Thanks again. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be on. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello. My name is Bob Bianchi. I'm honored to be the national president of the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, the largest and oldest Italian-American organization in the United States. We're a group of men and women who have literally donated tens of millions of dollars to people in need from our charities and our scholarships, as well as having a commission for social justice that fights discrimination for all races and all ethnicities, including Italian-Americans. So I wanted to talk to you about a little project that we're putting together here at the, uh, the Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, and it's the World Day for Social Justice, which is February 20th. And so we were gonna go around and we're gonna ask some of our members and other folks, what does social justice mean for you? And lots of people have a lot of interesting perspectives on this, but what I found to be intriguing already as we started the videotape is that some people don't even wanna even get on the camera because when you bring the term social justice up, they immediately go into a political mode, which is understandable given the uh, political culture that we're living under right now. And nevertheless, it is a valuable question to ask. And people are gonna have lots of different opinions on a lot of different matters. So we figured like, what do people consider social justice? And let's put something out so that people can kind of dialogue about it and think about it in their head. One caveat, this is these individuals' opinions. This does not represent the opinions necessarily of the Order of Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. And we're not even endorsing any of those opinions, even the ones that I gave. This is an intellectual exercise that we hope can move into a transformative place as to what social justice is or should be. So we hope that you at least appreciate and respect the opinion of our members and the individuals that we bring forward and that we do it in a spirit of community and advancement and empowerment for all people. Thank you for participating. And for those of you watching, thank you for watching. You can always find us at, at www.osia.org and be part of our group that does so much in the community. Happy Social Justice Day to you. Thank you. And social justice to me means wage equality between men and women in the workforce. Men are oftentimes paid more than women for the same job, even though women are equally as qualified and work just as hard. Women should also be given equal opportunity for advancements in their career. While it's improved over recent years, there is still a gap and more work needs to be done. Absolutely, I'm all for it. I think the whole world has been uh, struggling, trying to uh, implement it to make it uh, possible for this world. Unfortunately, we're using the wrong tools. If we use love as the main tool, we will achieve it very fast. And to me, social justice goes beyond the basic definition that everyone deserves equal economic, political, and social rights. I think that it's a collaborative effort for on behalf of everyone in society to make sure that those who are disadvantaged um, work together to make sure that we have those rights. I think it also implies leadership and those who are fortunate enough to make something happen, make it happen. So that's what social justice means to me. Social justice means to me that the opportunities and the privileges that everyone can enjoy in this country is equal for everybody, for all citizens. Thank you. It means that this, we need to overcome our prejudices and help other people, especially those in need, especially those that need housing. That's it. It means we need to do have more affordable rentals for people. People can't afford to buy a house when you're making minimum wage and they can't afford to rent an apartment. They need to go back to having some rooming houses. That's what they had back in the 50s and 60s. Social justice to me is to respect Columbus's statues and monuments and to keep Columbus Day on our calendars. 
Well, social justice means standing up for what you believe is right and helping other people in your community and the world. Social justice to me is that no matter your race, ethnicity, religion, or anything like that, everyone gets the same opportunities, tools, resources to lead a happy and successful life. Equality for everybody, no matter what color you are, race, creed, or religion. We are all here for the same reason, to live on this earth in peace. So let's all just uh, get along. Okay. Social justice is a, a very uh, complex and a and a very, uh, I would say, a very long topic to discuss. Uh, it, social justice means um, different to different individuals, to corporates, to uh, to uh, entities or groups of people. Uh, but what the minimal thing that I, what I think of social justice is, social justice uh, is for voting rights, to having a roof over your head, to be able to feed yourself and your family. Um, and my view of social justice is to elevate individuals, a group of individuals to a certain level um, through, through a support system, get them to a level, and beyond that, you, you equalize justice to everyone. So that, that's, that's what I think about what social justice is. My definition of social justice is equity and fairness for each individual or group without judgment, harmful intent, or otherwise negative influence. It's the unspoken authorization to be who you are and become what you want. It's the opportunity to enjoy life without inequities based on creed, color, or class. And it's the freedom to be your best you. Social justice means that everybody in the world should be treated equally and with honor and that we all should live together in peace and harmony. Well, justice to me means fairness, and I believe all men and women are created equal and should be all treated equally uh, with love and peace and no um, hatred. Social justice means fairness, fair treatment um, to everyone, regardless of your economic status, your um, race, um, your religious beliefs. It's um, fairness to, to everyone. For more related topics in this series, please visit our YouTube channel, Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. For more information on Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America and how to join, please visit osdia.org. Please also follow us on social media. The Italian America Show is sponsored by Full Sponsorship, Cento Fine Foods, Trust Your Family with Our Family, The Bianchi Law Group, Dr. K, the Management Professor, the authors of the number one international best-selling cookbook, Don't Cut the Basil. Dr. Mark D'Annunzio, National Fourth Vice President, Order Sons and Daughters of Italy in America. The Grand Lodge of New York. The Grand Lodge of Ohio. The Grand Lodge of Virginia. The Grand Lodge of Maryland. The Grand Lodge of the Northwest representing Oregon and Washington. Long Shot Productions, get back in the game. ACMT, Excellence in Aerospace Manufacturing. Purchase the new book, The Palm Beach PI, by Italian-American private investigator Frank Chiato, available now where books are sold.